We know that technology grows exponentially. Just look how far we have come with mobile phone technology over the past 20 years. Some technologies appear to become obsolete shortly after coming onto the market, and it's hard to keep up both technologically and financially. Medical technology is also surging ahead at amazing speed and accuracy. We are seeing the beginnings of a whole new world of medical treatments that medical authorities only a decade ago couldn't even begin to imagine. The following are five incredible medical technologies that could soon benefit mankind. Number 5. Anti-Bleeding Gel Joseph Landolina is an American inventor and a biomedical engineer who is known for starting his company, Ceneris, at a young age. Joe was only a 17-year-old student at New York University when he made a discovery that could save millions of lives. He invented a gel that instantly stops internal and external bleeding in under 10 seconds without the need to apply any pressure. The gel is a cream-like substance that will instantly seal a wound and start the clotting process. The anti-bleeding gel creates a synthetic framework that mimics the extracellular matrix. The gel is made up of plant-derived analogue called the extracellular matrix or ECM, a mesh of proteins and sugars that sits around the cells and tells them what to do and how to behave. The ECM varies from organ to organ. The gel is broken down into small pieces like Lego blocks and when it's placed on a wound it rebuilds itself into the pattern of the existing ECM. If you put the gel on skin it will have the properties of skin. If you put it next to the liver it will take on the properties of the liver. It also causes the body to produce a lot of fibre wherever it's applied. Fibre is a key molecule in the blood clotting process. The technology has other potential applications for wound healing, burn treatment and other therapeutics. If this product becomes commercial, it could save millions of lives, especially in combat zones. Number 4. Magnetic Levitation Chemists Glauco Souza grew a bit of human lung tissue by magnetically levitating it in a pool of liquid full of nutrients and other chemicals that cells need to grow. Typically, lab grown tissue is created in a petri dish, but elevating the tissue allows it to grow in a 3D shape that allows for more complex cell layers. That 3D growth pattern is a more perfect simulation of the way cells grow in the human body which means that this is a huge step forward in creating artificial organs that can be transplanted into humans. Sousa and his team began looking into a way to create realistic human tissue using nanomagnets that allowed lab-grown tissue to levitate above a nutrient solution that cells need to grow. This maglev setup could soon grow more true-to-life models of other types of tissues where similar techniques could be used to grow implantable organs. This is the first 3D piece of lung tissue with organised layers of cells that scientists have been able to grow. In his latest study, he and his colleagues developed a magnetic pen to pull together different layers of tissue that they originally grew separately. The maglev lung tissue were able to use a magnet to suspend the lung piece at the surface of the liquid it is growing in. Sousa is working on levitating and growing layered pieces of other types of tissues as well such as heart valves. He's also grown stem cells with his maglev techniques in a step towards regenerative medicine. Implantable organs are a long-term goal. Number three brain cells from urine. Some of the waste that humans flush away every day could become a powerful source of brain cells to study disease and may even one day be used in therapies for neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. 
scientists have found a relatively straightforward way to persuade the cells discarded in human urine to turn into valuable neurons. The benefit of sourcing cells in this way is that urine can be collected from nearly any patient and is particularly intrigued by the possibility of making induced pluripotent cells or IPS cells and neural progenitors, which are a biological cell that, like a stem cell, has a tendency to differentiate into a specific type of cell from the same patient. At the Gagnzhou Institute of Biomedicine and Health in China, biologists have taken waste cells from urine and modified them with the use of retroviruses to create progenitor cells, which the body uses as the building blocks for brain cells. The most valuable benefit to this method is that the new neurons created haven't caused tumours in any of the mice used for testing. Embryonic stem cells have been used for this in the past, but one of their side effects was that they were more likely to develop tumours after transplant. But after only a few weeks, the PBLA cells have already begun to shape into neurons with absolutely no unwanted mutations. The obvious medical benefit of getting cells from urine is that it's freely available, and scientists could work on developing neurons that are sourced from the same person increasing the chance that they will be accepted by the body. The results mean that scientists can now generate IPSCs using cells from urine samples, which are far more accessible than blood and tissue samples. Number two, printed bones. Using 3D printers, researchers at Washington State University have developed a hybrid material that has the same properties and the same strength and flexibility as real bone. This model can then be placed in the body at the site of the fracture while the real bone grows up and around it like a scaffolding. Once the process is complete, the model disintegrates. The printer they're using is a ProMetal 3D printer. They've created a formula that uses a combination of zinc, silicon and calcium phosphate that works so well that the entire process has already been successfully tested on rabbits. When the bone material was combined with stem cells, the natural bone grew back much faster than normal. It is already possible to 3D print for knee replacement and jaw reconstructions. One of the reasons why additive manufacturing appears to be the best solution for bone reconstruction is mainly because it is of great manufacturing technique to make custom-made products. Nobody has the same bone structure and 3D printing allows recreating any kind of bone shape. Bone can be created according to the patient's specific morphology. The real benefit of this technology is that feasibly any tissue, even full organ, could be grown with 3D printers once we have the right combination of starting materials. Number one, brain damage repair. We know that the brain is a delicate organ and even the slightest trauma can have lasting effects if it's injured. For people with traumatic brain injury, extensive rehabilitation is the only hope of leading a normal life again. However, there is now new technology that could hopefully assist in the fast healing of brain injuries, which could be as simple as a zap on the tongue. Your tongue is connected to the nervous system through thousands of nerve clusters, some of which lead directly into the brain. The PONS unit is a battery-powered device developed by three researchers at the University of Wisconsin. The PONS sensor is placed in the mouth where thousands of nerve endings on the tongue can send messages to healthy areas of the brain. The concept is that lingual stimulation combined with therapeutic exercise enables the brain to form new neural pathways for recovering motor functions like balance and movement in persons affected by multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy, traumatic brain injuries and stroke and Parkinson's disease. An oral tab on the T-shaped device provides the stimulation via 143 electrodes and fits on the anterior portion of the tongue to be held securely in place by the lips. 
pulses are delivered to the tongue in triplets of pulses at 5 milliseconds intervals every 20 milliseconds. The buttons on the device allow the stimulation to be turned on and off and increased or decreased in intensity. The brain's ability to recognise its operation in response to new information sources and new functional needs or new communication pathways is referred to as neuroplasticity, a process that underlies all cerebral learning, training and rehabilitation. Neuromodulation is the use of external tactile stimulation to intensely change and regulate the internal electrochemical environment of the brain. Patients being treated with that type of neuromodulation showed vast improvement after only a week.